I am a soldier. Can you tell it? On our highways and our national roads today, wherever there's a high rate of fatal accidents and have occurred, you will find a fearful and sober warning. Reading danger, high alert zone, high alert zone, beware, high casualty and fatal accident occurrence. Now, beloved, when one is confronted with such a grave warning, only a very foolish man, a very foolish woman, would not immediately slow down and become careful and concentrate to avoid becoming the next casualty. And may I say this, I'm not sure how long you can live in a carnal state where your passions are in charge and not the Spirit of God. I'm not sure, but if I were you, I wouldn't play around anywhere near that place. You are on dangerous ground. Someday you're going to fall and not get up. And it has happened many times. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 1 warns us, dead flies. Dead flies cause the ointment, the perfume of the apocryphy to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly. That's all the devil wants from you. That's all he's waiting for. A little folly. So doth a little folly. Esau. Numbers 32 verse 23. Warns us all. Be sure your sin will find you out. What does that mean in its context? Be sure your sin will find you out. Oh, it will affect your lives tragically and adversely. Be sure of that. Beloved, a Christian is in danger zone spiritually. He is in danger zone spiritually when, like Esau, he faces temptation. And casts aside, literally casts aside, he disregards any thought of the consequences. He only regards the moment of sinful pleasure. Now, I want to repeat that. A Christian is in danger zone spiritually. He's in it when he, like Esau, faces temptation and he literally casts aside, disregards any thought of the consequences. The consequences don't matter, whatever he lost. Only regarding the moment of sinful pleasure. Later on, he weeps for the rest of his life, ages, with everybody else near him that loved him. Don't doubt it. He is in high alert zone where a high occurrence of fatigue fatal accidents happen in our privileged Christian world and he has most surely beyond doubt thrown aside every meaningful spiritual exercise and discipline to maintain a vital relationship with God he has most surely there's no doubt he's thrown aside of his life every meaningful spiritual exercise to maintain his relationship with God. Be careful. Be warned. No matter who you are. Sin. Lieth. At the door. You think God said those words to Cain? I'm a soldier. Are you a soldier? Are we going to let this society dictate and control us? We're the peculiar people. We're the holy nation. We're a different culture in the midst of another culture. But somehow this culture is getting us. We're at ease in Zion. We think it's okay. It doesn't bother us. We can eat a big meal and roll over and go to sleep at night, wake up in the morning with a dull mind, and it's hard for us to concentrate and have any devotional time. And we don't think anything of it. What about lust? 
the lust. Scripture talks about those in the last days having eyes full of adultery. Eyes full of adultery and cannot cease from sin. With boys, young men, it's lust of looking. With girls, young ladies, it's lust of being looked at. Oh, we look. And we know we shouldn't look. We look. Even though there's a line down the middle of the auditorium, we look. And we like to be looked at, don't we? It's part of our fallen nature. And God says, I want you to bring those passions into subjection by the Spirit of God. God will help you. I am a soldier. Can you tell it? How about the tongue? James talks about bridling the tongue. Who bridles it? I do. And if you can't bridle your tongue, your religion is vain. It's empty. It doesn't mean anything. No matter how many things you have right, if you can't bring this tongue into subjection, your religion is vain. I am a soldier. Can you tell it? I discipline my mind. I discipline my eyes. I discipline my attitudes. I am a soldier. I discipline what my body wears. I discipline how it walks. I discipline how it sits. I discipline what it eats. I am a soldier. I tell my body when to go to bed and when to get up, when to talk, and when to be quiet. I am a soldier. Can you tell? This is one of the reasons why I have a problem with all this casual Christianity and all the clothes and and everything that goes with it, you know, this, this, this casual stuff, you know, I just have a problem with that. I'm sorry. I'm a soldier. Are you a soldier? Take just one character, John Wesley. There was no time wasted in his life. It was methodical, systematic. He went to dinner with the greatest man in English literature and the man said, now, you've finished dinner, let's... Uh, fold our legs under the table, he said. Uh, you know, cross your legs under the table and, and let's uh, just have a nice time of conversation. And Wesley said, I'm sorry, <laughs> I have to go. Oh, but it is not yet nine o'clock. No, it's not. Well, why are you going? He said, I have an appointment in the morning at four o'clock. At four o'clock? Tomorrow morning? Every morning of my life, he said. With who? With God. He disciplined his life. He disciplined his body in eating. He disciplined his hand in his pocket. For the hymn writer says, The eternal glories gleam afar to nerve my faint endeavor. So now to watch, to work, to war, and then to rest forever. We must be willing, desirous, and able by God's grace to bring this body under control. You can have the mastery over every aspect of your lower nature. In closing, we are talking about a whole air of self-discipline when we speak about this subject. A self-disciplined life in every area. You know, it's very interesting to me. I travel a lot, and therefore I'm in, in the airports a lot. And there are lots of soldiers flying on planes these days. Can any of you tell me how I can tell who the soldiers are? You see, when I was a soldier, and I wished I never was, but when I was a soldier, you had to wear a uniform to travel. But today, you don't have to wear a uniform. But you know what? I know those soldiers. I can pick them out of the crowd all over the airplane. You know why? They're soldiers. 
And there's something about a soldier. There's something about the way he walks. There's something about the way he looks. There's a soberness on his face. He's either been to Iraq and seen his buddy blown to pieces right before his very eyes, or he's on, to, on the way to Iraq and he doesn't know if he's coming back. You can see a soldier. You can see it on his face. You can tell those soldiers by the way they walk. Have you ever seen them? You can tell a soldier by the way they stand. You can tell a soldier by the way they talk. There's a determination in their eyes, a soberness on their face. They're courteous. I've noticed that. I've talked to them on the plains. They're soldiers. They've been trained to be that way. And mind you, young men, mind this. They were not that way when they joined the army. They were just like the rest of this casual bunch in America today. They were just kind of flopping around through life with their baggy pants on and all the other things they do. But they became a soldier and they were trained to be a soldier. They were taught how to act. They were taught what to say. They were taught how to sit and how not to sit, how to walk and how not to walk. And you can tell they're soldiers without a uniform. Oh, Lord, I'm a soldier. Can you tell? Who would cry in desperate fear and shock and shame. Did we not, prophet, did we not preach in thy, in thy name, in thy name? Cast out devils in thy name. have done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. You that never ever came to a place of repentance from the sin in your life, the known sin that this book condemns. Fear for words. I wonder how many across the entire world under the banner of Christianity would say those words to Christ one day when he returns. Oh, be careful. I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Brethren, I have to guard my spiritual life ruthlessly. I have to guard my spiritual life ruthlessly, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, especially if I have preached or faithfully witness to others, I myself should become a castaway. Literally meaning cast away. Terrifying word. My credibility, my credibility, cast away, tragically forfeited and lost. My testimony, cast away, thrown away. My ministry, disqualified. Master, forgive. And inspire us anew. Banish our worldliness. Help us to ever live with eternity's values in view. I'm a soldier. Are you a soldier?